This review does contain spoilers looking back at it, but I've tried to avoid going into specific plot details where I could. The favourite is the latest offering from the spearhead of the recent weirdo Greek cinema wave, Yorgos Lanthimos. I've seen his last two films, The Lobster and The Killing of a Sacred Deer, the former being one of my favourite films of the decade, and the latter being a neat little odd film. The favourite follows Queen Anne, played by an Oscar-winning Olivia Colman in 18th century England, who due to her frail condition is unable to govern the country properly, a task which is done by her close friend and lover Lady Sarah, Rachel Wise. Parliament, represented by the likes of Nicholas Holt and James Smith, engage in a tug of war for policies and motions regarding tax and an ongoing war with the French. Complications and conflicts for the Queen and her friend arise when Lady Sarah's cousin, Abigail, played by Emma Stone, arrives, asking for work, and she begins to strategically manoeuvre her way up the ladder, directly into the Queen's bedchambers, engaging a tug of war of a different sort with Sarah. The favourite is the first film from Yorgos, I believe, that he didn't write the script to, and it shows. The movie is a lot more accessible than his previous work. It is still sprinkled with his trademark fetish with all things weird and quirky. He's kind of like an R-rated Wes Anderson in that regard, isn't he? But the movie is quite straight-laced, comparatively, and thus can be enjoyed by all sorts of people, not least those who are turned on by period dramas like myself. The film is gorgeous to look at, not just the costumes and such from Sandy Powell, but the way it was presented and shot, with this naturalistic look, chapter cards and a symphonic score reminiscent of the great Barry Lyndon. Yorgos also makes use of all sorts of bizarre filming techniques like fisheye, giving the film a disorientating experience. It makes the film feel quite claustrophobic. The palace, empty and restricted, despite how magnificent and lavish and huge it was. All three leads were on fine form, playing complex characters whose tussling over power was electrifying to watch. One of the more unsettling and engaging aspects of the film is that it never really lets you settle on a character to root for. The Queen, for example, is quite immature, demanding, and must be a very irritating person to work under with her constant tantrums and outbursts. She can be dismissed as an eccentric and batty woman. Later on, however, we see that she is a very troubled individual, having suffered unimaginable mental trauma after losing numerous children, each of whom is represented by these pet rabbits she has, not to mention the gout. Her turmoil is soothed by her friend Sarah, who comes across as very privileged, manipulative and scheming, overruling the Queen and making decisions based on her own judgement for her own political gain and she treats her newly arrived cousin with venomous condescension. Abigail is not the frail young lass she makes out to be, however, and she has plans of her own, which involve winning the Queen's favour over Sarah. Sarah who, it is shown, at the very least has genuine love for her Queen and her country. The tension racks up, momentarily spared by brief snippets of wacky humour, climaxing with a haunting and hypnotic ending, neither woman achieving satisfaction, each in her own hell, having lost the very things they desired the most. The ending shot is not one you will forget in a hurry. The film does not reduce any of the three women to victims, nor does any one of them become moustache twirling, or well, ponytail twirling villains. Each is a woman with pain, with tragedy, with fear and anger, and each woman is capable of cruelty and ruthlessness. The dynamics between them, especially the Queen and Sarah, the most complex of the relationships, is riveting to watch. It's also interesting to note how much an effect their power plays have on the country, what with Sarah and Abigail in cahoots separately and secretly with different party leaders, influencing decisions in order to forward their position, which have huge ramifications for the inhabitants of the country. There's some excellent symbolism going on in the movie, if you can catch it. For example, there's a part where the two cousins are bird shooting, and when Abigail's gun is lowered while the two talk, the scene is framed in such a way that it looks like the gun is pointed right at her adversary's heart, hinting at her true intentions. You also have these brutal women all going at it with each other, while the men, in positions of power, in a patriarchy, hold no real power, and are all painted with makeup and wigs. 
And there's other things too, like the queen losing use of half her body when she sends Sarah away, almost like she's lost her other half. It's always fun spotting these little things that filmmakers put into their movie, and it also makes you appreciate the effort they put in a little more as well. In terms of the characters, I found myself rooting for Sarah when it was all said and done. She was bitchy and firm, but her heart was in the right place and I had respect for her. Abigail I found to be a snake, even if her past maybe shaped her to be that way. Or when you think about it, had she not gone about the way she did, she could have ended up being raped or abused constantly until her old age. It's an enjoyable film about power, love, manipulation in a cruel world. I give it a 7.5 out of 10.